Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome as we gather and spend our time sharing the praise of the Lord. And as we get in our first Sunday in Advent, the beginning of the new church year, an opportunity to prepare our hearts and our minds for the coming of Jesus at Christmas. The mission statement is Amen. by grace, reaching out in faith. We share our time of prayer. rise for the confession of forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. He restored us to God. Wake us up to turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, Hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven. And you are free from all that holds you back. And free to live in the peaceable realm of Christ. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by God's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also, please turn around to those around you and share the Lord's peace with them. Peace. 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 God sent hope to the earth, hope for a world free from war and pain, hope for a sense of purpose and belonging, and for peace and prosperity for our children and our children's children. When Christ came, he brought us the light of light, light that fills us with hope, illuminates our lives, and shines in our hearts. our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the first candle on this wreath, rouse us from sleep, 
that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes with all the saints and angels. Enlighten us with your grace and prepare our hearts to welcome him with joy. Grant us through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain, whose, whose days draw me.
This morning, before uh, worship started, I passed out some papers and, and some markers. Now, my little lesson calls for clay. And I thought clay was not an essential item to go get. So I used what I could use at home, paper and pencils. So instead of being potters, you're going to be artists. Pretend. Now, today I'm going to call out a shape, and you're going to have a short time to make it. So get your get your markers ready. First of all, I'd like you to make draw a flower. should be about finished. Hold them up so everyone can see them. Okay, looks good. All right, now, here's another one. On number two, it's a little harder, draw a horse. <laughs> this may take a little longer. I never could draw a horse. I never could draw any animal very well. Okay, the third one, I would like you to draw a vase. A vase that you put flowers in. That's a fairly simple one, I think. Okay, hold it up, let's see your base. Oh, very nice, very nice. Now we're going back to baby potters. What happens to a piece of clay that you forget about and leave out? It gets hard. Can you work it very well? No. It dries up, and when it dries up, you can't mold anything. And this is what happened to God's people during the days of the prophet Isaiah in our Bible. Isaiah was very upset and begged God to come down and change the hearts of his people. We have sinned, he says, and turned away from you. You have become angry with us. How can we be saved? No one calls on your name or pleads your mercy. You've turned away from us. And this sounds pretty, pretty hopeless. But Isaiah didn't think so. So, so he, he knew if the people would turn back to God, God could mold them and shape them into what he wanted them to be. The clay Isaiah I'm having trouble reading it. Isaiah said to God, Oh Lord, you are our father. We're the clay, you're the potter. You form by your hand. Please don't be angry with us. Look at us and see that we are your people. Isaiah knew even though the hearts of, the, of God's people had become hard, God could still mold them into what he wanted them to be. And on the fourth page, I'd like you to draw a heart. A heart. And hold your heart up. 
beautiful, beautiful artist. Like the people in Isaiah's day, we stray from God and our hearts become hard, but always not hopeless. If we turn back to God and ask him to forgive us, he can mold us and shape us into what he wants to be. You are the potter, we are the clay. Mold me and make me, this is what I pray. And let's have an echo player. Close your hands and close your eyes and repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God. Forgive us when we go astray. Take us in your hands and shape us into what you want us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, and I do not want the markers back. In fact, they may not have worked all that well, but thank you. Thanks to my 
to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Jesus Christ. Um, for in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of, of every kind, just as a testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in, in any spiritual gift and if you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by him. You were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise to the gospel. Hallelujah. Glory to whom shall we go? You who have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give us light. The stars will be fallen from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth, the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. <clears throat> Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert. You do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at hot crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, Keep away. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Again, a welcome to all of you who are here, and especially to those who are at home watching this, and whether it's this morning or sometime this week, thank you all for gathering. With our gospel reading from Mark 13 as our text, the theme of creative waiting. 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 While I'm reflecting on these lessons, I'm sitting in the car waiting for my wife, Wendy, to come out of the doctor's office. You never know how long the doctor's appointment is going to take, especially now. <laughs> yeah, then there's waiting at Cedar Point or Kings Island, even with the smaller crowds and having to make appointments, you're still going to wait for the big rides. And then there's waiting for the kids or the grandkids after the soccer game or the football game or dance lessons. So the question is, what are you doing while you're waiting for something to happen? Maybe you read a magazine. Oh, that's right, there's no more magazines in the doctor's offices. Maybe you're lucky there's a TV and you can watch something. Or maybe you can play a game on your phone. Or if you're outside waiting in your car, maybe you can 
called a friend. We've learned how to come up with creative ways to handle waiting. The question our lesson asks us today is, what are we doing while we wait for the second coming of Christ? Advent is a time of preparation for the coming of Jesus at Christmas and for the coming of Jesus at the end of the world. It's easy to see the signs telling us about the birth of Jesus. All you have to do is look around at the Christmas decorations. Or, you just read the Black Friday ads, didn't you? Or you can read the church newsletter and find out about ordering poinsettias or plans for Christmas worship. Now, about the signs in the end of the world, that's a little bit harder. Besides the fact that Jesus in our lesson said, no one knows when it will be except the Father. Our gospel today uses something called apocalyptic language, or end of the world language, which presents a picture of the day of our Lord, and the Son of Man coming in a cloud with great power and great glory when God would usher in a new age. Since we don't know when that kingdom is going to come, the lesson says, beware, keep alert, keep awake. So what are we doing while we're waiting? Are we doing the list of things that needs to be done, like work and meals and laundry and house repairs and, oh, Tuesday morning, snow shoveling? Uh -huh. Or can we use the waiting time when Jesus comes creatively. Jesus says that when the trees sprout leaves, you can see for yourself and know that summer's near. Summer's a sign of hope, vitality, vigor, renewed life. The signs of God's breaking into our world should be just as obvious and life-giving to those who trust in God. So, why not use this waiting time to thank and praise God for a new life and for hope? Mark Powell, professor emeriti of New Testament at Trinity Lutheran Seminary, encourages us to use this time to thank and praise God. He says, isn't that what we come to worship for? As he reflected back on his life, he remembered how his parents would load the kids in the car on a Sunday morning, and mom would say something like this, God blesses us six days a week, and when Sunday comes, we go to church to say thank you. As the years went by, he said, I discovered that worship services could be very uplifting. Sermons could be enlightening. Hymns could be meaningful. But deep down inside, I never really thought I was going to church to be fed or helped or inspired. I thought I was going to thank and praise God. Now when Professor Mark asked a group of people who had not attended church for a while what caused them to stop coming, many of them responded that they weren't being sufficiently fed or helped or inspired. He believes they assume that what happens on Sunday morning is for them. And he says it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that we come to worship to get something out of us. He says we should come to worship to thank and praise God. Whether it's Thanksgiving weekend or not, we come to worship to give thanks, to praise God for all the wonderful things he's done. It's a time to remind us of his presence in our lives. And when we come to worship, putting in our thanks and praise, we get something out of it. We feel inspired and helped. Every three years, the ELCA has a national youth gathering. Why is going to a national youth gathering such a meaningful experience? Because the youth took time to get ready to go to the event. 
They had to schedule time off on their subject jobs. They made time to reflect on the theme for the week. And they reviewed the schedule and knew how everything was going to work that week. It was the work that they put into it that made it so meaningful. Why do we get involved in worship plan? Whether it's the worship committee, or the acolytes, or the altar guild, or the lay readers, or the musicians, or the pastor for that matter. It's because when you're involved in something, you get more out of it. And it feeds you, it inspires you, it helps you because you know what's going on. You understand what's going on. You have a hand in making it meaningful. Want to feel more inspired about Christmas this year? Put ornaments and lights on the tree. Then it's not just a Christmas tree. It's a Christmas tree you put up. Take time to call people who are stuck at home because of COVID-19. Figure out ways you can offer them help and support. Or provide for the needs of the other. There's the angel tree. There's the Salvation Army. Pot. Make donations. See how you can help others. When you help to make a difference in someone else's life, you feel like you've accomplished something. Secondly, use this time of Advent, this time of waiting, to confess your sins. We think of Lent as being a time to reflect on the reason that Jesus came into the world. But you know that line from Christmas, Jesus is the reason for the season. It reminds us that Advent too is a time to reflect on why Jesus came into the world. To save us from our sins and to give us forgiveness of sins. The second reading for today from 1 Corinthians talks about the grace of God in Christ Jesus. About the Lord revealing himself to us. And about being blameless on the day of Jesus Christ. Jesus came into the world. He's redeemed us. He's released us from the death sentence of sin by paying the ransom for our lives. In giving up his life for us. So, heaven can be a time to be excited. God's acted in the world in Christ. God is acting in the world now through us. And God will be acting in our lives tomorrow and the days ahead. Now, why is forgiveness and repentance so important? Think about the day of judgment or the end of the world, as they call it, this way. There's an old commercial for Fram oil filters. This is what they said about oil changes. They said, you can pay me now, or you can pay me later. This meant, you can pay the repairman now for better oil at the oil change, or you can pay him later for replacing broken parts in your engine, which is going to be a lot more expensive. Think of it this way. We can face divine judgment now, confess our sins to God, Repent of those sins and have the sins wiped away by divine forgiveness. If all of our wrongs have been removed by daily repentance and forgiveness, there won't be anything left for Judgment Day. We will be blameless, as our second reading said. The other option is to avoid daily repentance and forgiveness and face God later with a whole long list of sins. Kind of like showing up before Santa Claus with a lot of models. Creatively, thanking and praising God, asking God for forgiveness. And finally, looking for signs of hope in your life. Beware, keep alert, keep awake. But the viewpoint that you use is all important. Two persons step briskly along the same street in the early days of the Advent season. 
One saw a blur of forms moving by, heard the dull, indistinguishable background sounds, felt nothing but the uncomfortable bite of snow on her face. The second person walked along the same street, but caught a very different vision. They saw bright young faces with rosy cheeks from the chill. They saw older faces etched with the marvelous lines of years. This one heard laughter. This one heard the warm tones of friends in conversation. And in the distance, over the loudspeakers, O Holy Night was playing. The cold air seemed to give a hint that things are fresh and new. Finally, the two travelers reached their destination, and when the first one got inside, he yanked off his coat and moaned, Thank God I'm out of that mess. The other one said, Thank you, God, for showing me the freshness and joy possible this season. Perspective. Is it possible to pass through this season with our nose to the ground and our spirits struck inward and say, Bah, humbug. Or is it possible to see the signs of hope and new life, see forgiveness, and give thanks and praise to God for all that you have seen and heard, just as the shepherds did that first time? Amen.
We believe, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us share in prayer. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Here are prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, falling ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth in our relationship to it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for people who are in crisis as the season change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. Lord, continue to guide and bless the ministry of the angel tree and the salvation army. May you relieve burdens, may you sustain bodies, may you ease minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people in our families and our congregation who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. We especially, Lord, that be with Pat and Ruth and Pastor Chuck and Roberta and Francis and Bonnie and Joe. Support, encourage, Strengthen them, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the lives and witnesses of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing. Those names we know, and those whose names are known only to you. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Draw near to us, O God. And receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we bring around the Lord's Son.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new. In the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Bless you see comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, eat and drink. I invite you to go ahead and peel off the top of your cup. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. I invite you to peel back the foil on your cup. Take and drink. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us and we rejoice. In this bread and cup you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Are there announcements to share other than the ones put it inside the bulletin? Uh, the, the bulletin actually uh, does say that there's Bible study. There is no Bible study. We're off for the moment. So no Bible study for the moment. And another. We got time. <laughs> Um, I have two things to share with you guys. Um, I did want to let everybody know that the Education Committee did order Advent devotionals. Unfortunately, um, they haven't arrived yet. So with hope, they will be here um, next Sunday and we'll have them out for you guys. Um, and I also wanted to make an announcement to let everybody know that I am starting to make plans for confirmation classes. Our confirmation books finally arrived. So um, that will be starting soon. Um, for kids in 7th and 8th grade, it's a two years uh, of study before you are confirmed. So if there's anybody who knows 7th or 8th grader in the congregation that I haven't already talked to, please let me know. I just want to make sure I have the list straight before I actually get started. So um, I will be working on that. So if anybody can think of anybody else that I haven't already talked to, let me know. Okay, thank you. I just want to reiterate that we really are strict about reservations for Christmas Eve um, because we are limited in how many can actually be in this space. It is really important that you pick a time. Um, we have four o'clock, seven o'clock, and nine o'clock. The only special music I have is for the four o'clock service soon, so I will be bugging several of you. Uh, please don't wait for my invitation. I don't want to miss anyone. Thank you, Amanda. But um, <laughs> um, anyway, um, please, well, it, it, you don't have to, it, you don't, earlier was better than late for obvious reasons because we could fill up and then you could not have your choice. So if you do know what's going on, um, call Robin and let her know. She's, she's creating that list. So um, I think that's it. Thank you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.